Good morning and welcome to All Nations Church in Cardiff. I'm Andrew, I'm one of the elders here and it's my joy to welcome you to my home but also to our Sunday gathering. Jesus said that when two or three gather in his name, he is in their midst. So we're thrilled to be able to welcome you to our gathering online. If you're from Cardiff or further afield in Wales, or even if you're in another country or listening at a later date and time, we are so glad that you've been able to join us this morning. We're going to take an offering to the Lord. We're going to come to the table. And that means we'll take bread and wine and we'll participate in Jesus Christ. Then in a little while, Dave Shutt will share the word that God has given him for us today. Before we start, it'd be good to pray. Psalm 118 says that this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So Heavenly Father, we thank you today for a new day. Thank you that your promise is that you're with us. Thank you that we have breath in our lungs to praise and worship you. Thank you that you are good and everything that you do is good. Thank you that you have hope for us today and that you give us hope and encourage us and enable us not to fear. So Lord, we lift our hearts and we lift our eyes to you this morning, the author and perfecter of our faith, and we say thank you. We're going to be worshiping and singing songs to Jesus, but I want to encourage you to sing along. Hopefully you'll know the songs, but lift your voices, give thanks where you are, and I'll see you in a little bit. Morning, church. Um, I just want to quickly read from Lamentations 3, verse 21 to 23. It says, This I recall to my mind, and therefore I have hope, that the Lord's loving kindness indeed never ceases. His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And guys, I just want to encourage us that though we're not able to see each other face to face this morning and be in person together, that the Lord God is still good and he's still worth worshipping this morning. He's still holy. He's still magnificent. His compassions are new every morning. His mercies are new to us every single day. And the Lord Jesus is ever so kind and he's worthy of our worship. And so this morning, I just encourage you, sing along if you can, guys. And um, let's worship our King Jesus together. Amen. Of the world, 
His blood breaks the chains Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb Every knee will bow You are 
church family. I hope you're having a fantastic Sunday so far, worshipping God together. Uh, we're so pleased to be able to come straight out of worship, to be able to keep thanking God and remember what, what he's done with sharing the bread and wine. So if you haven't already got your bread and wine ready, pop off to the kitchen, press pause and go get it now. Um, and if you've got your Bibles, can you turn with me to um, the book of Luke? And we're going to start in uh, Luke 24. Um, and in uh, 24, we've seen um, that Jesus has rose again and he appears to two of his followers um, on the road to Emmaus. And in verse 30, they've, inv they've invited him home um, to their house and we see them um, um, about to sit down and eat. So in verse 30, it says, as they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognised him. And I just um, felt really encouraged by this scripture. Um, so as they took the bread, their eyes were open. So today, as we take the bread, let our eyes be opened again to what Jesus did for us, the incredible sacrifice he made for us. And then it also says they recognised him. So again, let us recognise Jesus for who he truly is the Son of God. 
Um, so if you, we turn back then to Luke 22, and um, we we're going to read about the Last Supper um, with uh, just that, um, that um, new um, refreshing um, in mind. And uh, we, we, at verse 19, he says, um, he took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. So as we take our bread today, let us remember him again afresh. And I'm just going to pray and I'm going to take the bread. So if you want to just uh, raise your bread with me. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for what you have done for us. Lord, let us never um, get numb or, or tired of remembering the incredible sacrifice you made for us on the cross. Let us always come to you because um, we know you are the source of all life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Take the bread. Um, at the Last Supper, Jesus also raised his cup of wine and he actually raised it twice. And each time he made a promise. So the first time that he raised the glass, um, he said, uh, this was before the meal, and he says this in verse 17 from the Passion Translation, I promise you that the next time we drink this wine, we will be together in the feast of God's kingdom realm. So just like when we eat the bread, we can remember what it is that God did for us when he died. When we take the wine together, we remember that Jesus lives again. And that not only does he live again, but he invites us to live with him in God's kingdom realm and to celebrate at a huge feast together. And then after the meal, he picks up the glass again and he made another promise. So um, this is from the Easy English translation. And in verse 20, he says, this cup shows the new promise that God makes because of my death. When I die, my blood will pour out of my body. I will do that for you. So Jesus shows us how God will fulfill that first promise of us celebrating with him in God's kingdom. And it's all because of what Jesus did. It's all because he died for us. So as we drink the wine together today, I'm hoping that you can join me in remembering Jesus's promises. But not only these promises, because we know that God makes us new promises every day. Um, we've got a rainbow up in our window. I know that loads of you have another rainbow up in your window. We've seen all the crafts you've been making. And obviously the rainbow is a symbol of God keeping his promises to his people. So as we take the wine, I hope that you'll join us in thanking God for the promises he's made, the ones that he's already fulfilled and the ones that we can be excitedly expectant that he will fulfill in the coming days. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Lord, um, that you uh, are amazing and that you, be because of what Jesus did for us, we can come close to you and that you have good promises for our life, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you that um, we have seen you fulfill promises and that you're going to fulfill even more because of your goodness to us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Thank you for sharing this meal with us. Um, I just want to encourage us again that we will keep doing this until he comes again, because he is coming again. We're now going to hand over to Andrew as he leads us in our tithes and offerings. It's time to take an offering to the Lord, to be able to give back to God out of the abundance that he's poured in, to be able to give back to him freely and wholeheartedly and cheerfully. Jesus said to his listeners one day that, who looks after the birds of the air? They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet their heavenly Father feeds them. How much more will he care for you? I've learned that the Lord is a provider. He provides everything that I need. So it's with joy that I'm able to give back to him. 
I would encourage you this morning that it's not a compulsion to give. But the promise to us is that if you sow, you will reap. In a moment, you'll see some details as to how to give electronically. And we'll hear some music from Paolo. So we're going to give to the Lord now. An offering with glad and cheerful hearts. God bless you as you give. the Lord at all times, at all times. Bless His holy name. Sing His praise at all times, at all times. Hello family, my name's Josh and together with my wife Renee we help to lead the youth ministry at All Nations Church in Cardiff. It's great to have an opportunity today to tell you about how we're able to help our young people while we're not meeting together in person. There's loads of content going up on our Instagram and YouTube pages. You'll find those at All Nations Youth Cardiff. There's content there from the leaders and from the youth to keep you strong in God, to make you laugh and to help us keep connected while we're not meeting together in person. So here's a little taster of what you might find. Hey everyone, I'm Grace and I'm from the Youth in Cardiff. Hey guys, how are you all doing? Okay guys, so.
be a bit excited and expectant um, to what's to come after this. There is purpose in your patience. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart, and I will tell you of all the marvellous things you have done. So if you don't quit, friends, you'll win. So I spent the past six months doing my DTS in YWAM over in California. Um, it was an incredible experience. Things I learned things about myself. God showed me things about myself and and I felt really close to his heart and he was sharing things with me that, you know, were so special. And God did some incredible things in my life and the connections I've made with people, seeing him move in their lives, it's just been so incredible, completely life-changing. Um, during DTS, we go on local outreach once a week into the town. Um, and before that, we'd go to God and we'd ask him if there anything that um, he wants to show us or if there's specific people we need to talk to. And always he would talk to us. As we saw healings of arthritis, swollen arms just going down in front of our eyes, legs growing out, people giving their lives to Jesus. You know, we got to share the gospel with um, some young people who have gotten stuck in with drugs and smoking and alcohol. So that was such an incredible moment to be a part of their journey to finding God. In the Philippines as well, we were the first foreigners to travel up into a mountain tribe which for me is incredible because that's what God has called me to do. And so that was just an incredible opportunity. The Holy Spirit swept through. The language barrier wasn't a problem. And um, we just had a good laugh. We, everybody from the oldest in the tribe to the youngest was enjoying themselves. And we, so did we, the team and loved it. You know, the traveling up there, spending time with those people, such a life changing experience. It was incredible. So yeah, I definitely recommend it. Please go do YWAM. I, um, not biased at all. <laughs> so we're updating the ANC Youth Instagram and YouTube pages really regularly. So make sure to click on the links below and otherwise search for All Nations Youth Cardiff. Click follow or subscribe to keep up to date with all that's going on. And next we're really privileged to hear from Dave Shutt who's going to be bringing us the word of God this morning. Let's be attentive as we hear and active as we obey all that God is going to speak to us. Love and peace to you all. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our home. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Dave. I'm one of the elders at All Nations Church here in Cardiff. And uh, it's great to be with you. Thank you for being with us. And the word of God is going to bless you today. These are the greatest days to be alive. Now, immediately, I know what you're thinking. That is a statement seemingly at odds with everything that the news is telling us that the internet is telling us, but for believers in Jesus Christ, we don't live by what the world tells us or by what we see in the world. We live by what God says, and we see from God's perspective. That's what 2 Corinthians 5 talks about, that we don't live by sight. We actually live by faith. That's how we walk. And Romans 1 says something similar for us, the righteous. It says that the righteous will live by faith. That's why these are the greatest days to be alive. There has never been a day like this. We have never been closer to the return of Jesus Christ. And speaking of Jesus Christ, I've just been doing some wonderful studies just about him, thinking about him today uh, for, for, this, for this week. Uh, Jesus Christ, Hebrews 6 tells us, is an anchor for us. He is a secure anchor. You know, uh, Psalm 18 tells us that uh, God is a solid rock on which we can stand, Matthew 7 tells us that if we'll follow God's uh, word of Jesus' example and put them into practice, he becomes a firm foundation on which we can build. And Ephesians 2 tells us that Jesus Christ has become a cornerstone for us. And my favorite chapter in all of scripture, I think, Colossians chapter 1, tells us that not only did God create everything through Jesus Christ, but that actually Jesus Christ is sustaining everything. He's holding everything together for us. These are great days to be alive. They're days where we can have hope. Earlier this week, I had to go uh, and do the shopping. I went to Asda, our supermarket uh, of choice in a pandemic, and I had to queue for 45 minutes to get in. Um, but the sun was shining, and I was remembering what we've been learning about at All Nations Church, about the importance of singing and the importance of going on being filled with the Holy Spirit. So I just began just to sing to the Lord and uh, had a great time. When I finally got in to the shop, the singing continued, but I wasn't singing some of our praise and worship 
favorites uh, now, as does uh, uh, Whacked Me on the Side of the Head with a great big 80s mega mix and the Wham Classic Freedom, not to be confused, by the way, with the George Michael solo version of the same name, came over the tannoy. And it's just such a great tune. I just started singing along and I'm going down the aisles, scanning and shopping and uh, I'm just singing. Uh, and I was just very happy and chirpy, had a few moves. I'm not going to lie to you. I've got some moves in the supermarket. When uh, a gentleman um, just called me eye and said, oh, you're ch cheerful considering everything that's going on. I said, sir, got every reason to be cheerful. The sun is shining. I've got uh, my health. I've got uh, clothes on my back, food on my table. And above all everything else, uh, sir, um, I have hope today because I know Jesus. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And so we got talking in the bread aisle and um, uh, a bit of back and forth. And finally, he asked me this question. He said, well, tell me this. How can you believe in a God that you cannot see? I said, that's a fair question. But can I ask? You a question, sir, why are you so afraid of a virus that you can't see? I said, oh, that's easy, because it's affected my entire life. It's changed everything. And I just see the effect it's having on the world around me. It's affecting every area of my life. I said, well, sir, my answer would be very similar to that, of why I believe in a God that I can't see. I've known the power of Jesus Christ in every area of my life. He's affected me in every area of my life, from uh, my health, to my finances, to providing me jobs, to uh, key relationships in my life. Jesus Christ has, uh, the power of Jesus has made it known in every area of my life. And above all that, sir, I've known the power of Jesus Christ in forgiveness and in his gift of salvation. And we talked some more. I told him about All Nations Church being online and how he could tune in. So, sir, if you're out there, welcome. Uh, and then he took a, a swift exit down the pet food aisle while I took a sneaky right down home baking. But I went on my way thinking, look, I, that, that's true. I've got every reason to smile. I've got every reason to have hope in my heart because I am one of those like you that live by faith in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ lives, I can, like the great hymn uh, tells us, I can have faith for today, bright hope for tomorrow, blessings all mine with 10,000 beside. These are days of hope for us. Maybe uh, like me and like Zoe, we've been watching or listening to the daily briefings from the government. I'd encourage you to do so. It's good to know what's going on. If for no other reason that we can pray into it and we can pray with a little bit more certainty and clarity. But they use certain phrases following the science. We don't know. Um, these are uncertain times. And every time I hear that particular phrase, the Holy Spirit keeps telling me they may be uncertain times for the world, but for the believers, that's not the case. These are days where we can be very certain of God's word. We can be certain of it. Um, if God has said something, friends, we can be 100% confident and certain that it will come to pass. If the Lord has said it, he'll do it. Faith is very much agreeing, believing in God, believing in who he says he is and believing what he says he will do. I've put my faith in Jesus Christ and I'm encouraged by the scriptures. Numbers 23, for example, tells me that God is not a man that he would lie or such a man that he would change his mind. And I'm sure you know this scripture in Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11, that just as the rain and the snow comes down from heaven, waters the earth and produces a great harvest. It's exactly the same with the word of God. His word comes out, it waters, and it will produce what it was sent to do. It will accomplish, it will not return to him void. That gives us great hope because if God has said it, I can believe it and that settles it. Even if a circumstance seems to push against the word of God, the word comes along with certainty and pushes it back. There's only ever one winner when circumstance and God's word meet. God's word wins every time. And some people might say these are uncertain times. I want you to know we can be certain of God's word. He says to us in Isaiah 40 that the grass withers, sure, the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord stands forever. In Psalm 138, I think it's verse two, he tells us that uh, out of everything else, above everything else, God has exalted his name and his word. 
These are days of hope for believers. And I'll say it again, though the world sees uncertain times, the truth of God remains certain. Truth like this one. Have a look in your Bibles, please, to Romans 8, verse 28. Let's look at a, a truth that we can be absolutely certain of today. Romans 8, verse 28 says this, And we know that in all things God works together everything for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Now, that's not a throwaway, ah, oh, you know, que sera, type of statement. That's not, oh, yeah, God will make something good out of a bad situation. Yeah, God will work something out. My friends, that's not what the word of God is saying. It says he's working everything out. He's working everything together for the good of those who love him. Now, not for one moment do I believe that God sent COVID-19, that he's not behind this pandemic, but he will use it. And he will work everything together, as the word says in Romans 8, for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. So let's put that promise to work in our lives right now. Let me ask you two questions. Do you love Jesus Christ? Do you believe you are called according to his purpose? Now, some of you hesitated there, so let me help you. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says that we are, you are, his workmanship. The New Living Translation says you're his masterpiece and you have been created for good works in Christ Jesus that he prepared in advance for you to do. In other words, you have been created for purpose. So let's bring ourselves back to Romans 8. He'll work everything together for the good of those who love him and those who are called according to his purpose. That's why we can have hope today, friends, that the world sees uncertain times, but I can look to the word of God and find truths which are certain. And these are days for declaring God's word, for reading them out loud, for putting our faith in Jesus Christ and what he said. Faith builds us up. Fear is a liar that only wants to hold us down, only wants to bind us and drown us. But faith in Jesus Christ helps us see things from his perspective and see things how they really are. These are days for faith and not fear. These are days to put our hope in God and not for hopelessness. And how does faith come? The word of God tells us. Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then James chapter one tells us that we're not just to be hearers of that, but our faith should be put into action. That we shouldn't just be hearers, but we should be doers of the word. Now, some of you immediately are thinking what I'm thinking. Dave, uh, I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. Exactly how am I supposed to put the word of God into action? Well, that's a simple question to answer. The first thing that we can all do to do God's word is this. Believe it. Agree with it. Confess it. Declare it. Proclaim it. Pray into it prophesy it. I'm running out of fingers. You see, we can put God's word into action just by agreeing with it and speaking it out. See, when I agree with God, I put my faith in God. I put my faith in what he says. And then every decision, every action I make subsequent to that, that's in line with what God has said, becomes an action, a decision of faith. In uncertain times, we have the privilege of knowing God's word and agreeing with it and putting it into action. As an example of that in the scriptures, I was reading this week the story of King Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20. Uh, Jehoshaphat is a, a great king, but he's warned there's a vast army coming. He gets uh, uh, news one day, uh, the Ammonites are coming, the Moabites are coming, the Mayanites are coming, the Stalactites, the, the Megabites, the Gigabites, the Terabites. If it's an Ait, Jehoshaphat, it's coming, a vast army. So Jehoshaphat does the thing that we should all should do when we find ourselves under a bit of pressure, and he inquires of the Lord. And verse 15 tells us, uh, Jehoshaphat, don't be discouraged. I'm with you, says the Lord. And then in verse 17, there comes some more detailed instruction. I'm going to read it to you. It says this, you will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm, hold your position, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. Do not be afraid. And do not be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them and the Lord will be with you. Now, 
that seems a little contradictory the first time you read it. Uh, I'm going to fight for you. You won't have to fight. <sighs> Phew. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. But you're still going to have to go out and face them. What? Yeah, I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to be with you. But you still got to take up your positions. You know, friends, God fights for us. God goes ahead of us. He backs us up. He walks alongside us. He fights for us. But we have to take up our positions. We have to put our faith into action. And Jehoshaphat has to make a decision. In an uncertain time, does he believe the word of God is a truth he can be certain of? Well, praise God, Jehoshaphat believes God. And he begins to put things into practice. And he makes preparations to go out and face the enemy. And as a sign of his faith in what God has said, and as an offering to his God, he goes out to meet the enemy, but he doesn't send out the infantry or the cavalry or the archers. He sends out, he appoints singers to go to the head of the army. And as the singers begin to sing, and as the singers begin to praise God, it says the Lord sets ambushes for the enemy. And God sweeps in and completely annihilates the enemy. Why? Because God had said, the battle was not yours, Jehoshaphat, the battle's mine. I'll be with you and I'll fight for you. Put your faith into action. It was an uncertain time for Jehoshaphat, but he stood on the certainty of what God had said. Remember, if God makes a promise, there's not one circumstance that can derail what God has said. If God has said it, he will do it. Any circumstance opposed to the word of God will fail. And as I was thinking on this, these scriptures, God reminded me of a, a time in my life and an example where I saw this work in my own life. When I was uh, at Covenant College back in 2001, I lived in a, a, a village in the south of Leicestershire and it was late after life group and we had stayed around talking and it was near midnight, so it was time to go. Um, and so I got back to my car, I put my bag on the seat next to me, and I put my guitar where I always put my guitar, because it didn't fit in the boot. I put my guitar right behind the two front seats, wedged between the front seats and the back seats. Now, the other reason I did that was because this guitar was very precious to me. It meant a lot to me. Um, I remember buying it. I bought it from a shop on Mary Street in Cardiff called Gamlin's. And as I walked out of the shop with my guitar case, I heard the voice of God say this to me. He said, Dave, with this guitar, you'll travel abroad and you'll serve me in worship and song. And I cherished that word. I took it to heart and um, I believed it. I put my faith in. Anyway, fast forward. And now I'm driving home from Life Group with the guitar behind me when suddenly every light on my dashboard came up, got lit up like a Christmas tree. My car seized, smoke began to come out the side of the uh, of, of the bonnet, and I managed to, to steer uh, and come to a rest just on the, the side of the road. By this time, it was about midnight, and uh, I, I was worried. As I looked out the front of my window onto the bonnet, I saw all the paint on my bonnet suddenly blister in front of me, and I began to uh, see more smoke coming out the side. So I did the sensible thing, and I got out the car, and uh, I did the stupid thing then, and I looked under the car, and I saw flames licking out from underneath. And at that point, I had a bit of a mental blank as to what to do. So I called my dad and woke him up and said, Dad, I don't want you to be alarmed. My car's on fire. Uh, what do I do? This is not something they taught me in driving school. Um, and dad said very calmly, son, get away from the vehicle and then get away from the vehicle and get away from the vehicle. And then you'll need to call the police and you'll need to call the fire brigade and you'll need to call the recovery people as well. So I called the police and they sent someone out and I called the fire engine and uh, they were on their way. And then I sent, called the recovery people and I, I, I kid you not, uh, I was on hold to the recovery people. And whilst looking at a now a car that was on flame, uh, on fire with flames getting quite high, I was listening to the hold music, which was first Aretha Franklin, Rescue Me, and then the Tramps disco classic, Disco Inferno, Burn Baby Burn. Sometimes, friends, you just have to smile. But as I watched the car and as I was waiting for the police and the fire engine to arrive, I suddenly remembered my guitar was in the car and I remembered the word of God that he'd given me. And at that point, I became very upset, not for the car, car's a car, but I got upset for the guitar because God had spoken to me about it. 
And there was nothing I could do, had that conflict. Do I go back? Do I try and get it? But no, I remember my dad's words. And so whilst I was crying, I just said, Lord, you said. And that's all I could say. And the fire engine arrived about 10 minutes later, uh, put the fire out quite quickly. And um, the police arrived and they took me to the, the car just to, to check it over. And it was a mess. Uh, Tires had burst, uh, the whole front, the engine compartment had completely burnt out. The dashboard, the steering wheel had all melted. The roof had gone. The front seats were just uh, charred and black. The frame, all the material had gone. Um, but then the policeman opened the back door, well, prized it open really, and said, huh, is this your guitar? And I looked and I, I couldn't believe it. The fire had consumed the front half of the front seats. And it consumed most of the back seat, but nothing had touched the guitar case. Not, 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 not a little singe, not even the smell of smoke was on it. And I started laughing. The policeman said, son, this is no laughing matter. I said, no, I said, I'm, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for the guitar. And I said, hallelujah. I said, Lord, thank you. And as clear as day, I heard God say to me, well, Dave, I told you. I said, six months later, I found myself on a plane flying to the United States of America for the best part of a year with my guitar with me. And I went out to serve the Lord. And one of those things was in music and in song. It was an uncertain time, but God's word proved true. God's word beats circumstance every time. The world says these are uncertain times, unknown data, unknown answers. We have a truth we can be certain of. Very quickly, I'd just like to give you three more promises that as I've waited on God this week, that he's given me to share with you, truths we can be certain of. We've already looked at one in Romans 8, 28, but I'd like to give you three more promises of God that in uncertain times, we can declare with absolute confidence. The first one is Psalm 119, verse 68. It simply says this, my God, you are good and everything you do is good. Teach me your ways. Friends, never lose sight of this wonderful truth. God is a good God and everything he does is good. Now the psalmist goes on and he says, now teach me your ways. These are times where we may uh, be isolated and cut off from one another, but God wants, us, uh, wants to teach us his goodness. That in uncertain times is a truth we can be certain of. He is good and everything he does is good. The second promise that God gave me to tell you is found in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14. It simply says this, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, just as the waters cover the sea. Friends, in all that's going on, be assured of this. The plan and purpose of God is steadfast. It has not been derailed. God is settled and shaken on his throne. I've been blessed, maybe you've seen them going for walks around where we live, seeing lots of rainbows in windows, lots of rainbows drawn in chalks on the floor. Uh, uh, God's recovering his rainbow as a sign of hope. And uh, when you read in Genesis chapter 9, God established the rainbow in the, in the sky as a sign of his covenant promise that never again would he destroy the earth by flood. He's never going to flood the earth, friends, but he has promised in Habakkuk 2 verse 14 that he is going to fill it with his glory. He won't flood the earth, but he's told us he's going to fill it with his glory. And Mark 16, 15, Matthew 28 tells us he is going to fill the, uh, the whole world with his gospel because we've been sent to the ends of the earth. He's not going to flood this earth, but he is going to fill it. He's not going to destroy it, but he's going to fill it with his glory. We can be confident of God's word. And finally, here's another promise you can be certain of in a worldly uncertain time. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, God says this, I am Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God Almighty, the one who is, the one who was, and the one who is coming again. Friends, in what the world says is an uncertain time, here's a great truth we can be certain of. Jesus Christ is coming again. And he's not coming back for a snatch and grab. He's not coming on a rescue 
mission to grab the church just in the nick of time before a pandemic or a plague takes over the world. No, my friends, Jesus Christ is coming back for a great, beautiful and glorious bride without stain and without blemish. Jesus Christ is coming again. The world tells me these are uncertain times. The internet tells me, the news tells me, the journalists tell me, the politicians tell me these are uncertain times. But let's declare the word of God together and declare truths that we know to be certain, that we can be confident in. I want to encourage you this week, find promises of God and declare them. Declare truths that you can be certain of, that you can be sure of. Find that faith will rise in your heart. Hope will come as you declare the word of God. That as you say, the world says that, but God says this, and I'm putting my trust in what God says. As you meet, maybe uh, by Zoom or FaceTime or Skype, however it meet, pick up the phone, encourage one another, agree with one another that God is good and his word is true. Let faith arise in your heart, because while the world will continue to say these are uncertain times, we have hope, faith for today, bright hope for tomorrow. Why? Because God word, God's word is true and is true to be trusted. Bless you. Have a great day. And I'll see you soon. Well, it's been a great morning. Thank you for being with us. And thank you, Dave, for sharing the word. The Lord has got a great plan for each one of us. His plan is to prosper and not for harm. He wants to lead us out of fear and into joy. If you don't know Jesus or you've never confessed Jesus as your Lord, if you've never made him the boss of your life, we'd love to introduce Jesus to you. A phone number will appear on the screen and you can call us right now and we'd be glad to introduce Jesus to you. There's also an email that starts with hello. We'd love to hear from you if you've got a request for prayer if you've got a testimony of what God has spoken or what he's doing in your life, we'd love to hear from you. If you want to know Jesus, then don't wait another day. Give us a call or write an email to us and we'd love to hear from you. I'm going to pray right now. Father, I pray that you would bless everyone hearing this word today. That you would give strength to those that need it. That you would bring health to those that need it today. Thank you that on the cross, you made all provision available for us. So we thank you for your goodness into our lives. I pray for strength for our key workers, that they would be strong and make good decisions and know your strengthening day by day as they face challenges. I pray for those that are at home and dealing with the situation that they've got to face. Lord, I pray that you would encourage them today, that you would give them a hope for today. Lord, you lead us in triumph. Well, Lord, let everyone who hears this now know that you are working in their lives, that you are speaking to us and with us day by day. I pray that you give everyone a great week ahead, that they would know your goodness, they would feel your presence and that they would hear your word as they wait upon you. Lord, we give you thanks. You are such a wonderful God. Well, that's our time for our gathering this week. I trust that you'll have a great week. Go and share the good news of Jesus with your neighbours, with your colleagues, whether you're in schools or factories or offices or warehouses or whether you're out on the road. Have a great and blessed week. We also meet in small groups through the week to encourage one another, to bless one another. We meet over the phone. We meet through online video conference calls. It's a great way to keep in touch. If you'd like to be part of that this week, then send us an email at the details that you've seen on the screen and we'll send you an invite. It will be great to see you. God bless you. Have a great week.